All right, welcome to chapter three, section 3.1. Um, we're going to talk about um, exponential functions, all right, what those are, how do they operate, what they look like in a graph, and how to evaluate them. Okay, We're going to learn how to evaluate, analyze, and graph exponential functions. And we're also going to learn how to solve problems involving exponential growth and decay functions. And some of these you've already known how to do. So this might be a review for some of you. All right, so what is an exponential function? Okay, an exponential function is uh, a function that has a variable as an exponent. Okay, so here is the basic form of an expo uh, exponential function. f of x equals a times b to the x. And there are some restrictions here. Okay, a cannot equal 0, because if a is 0, then this whole equation will be equal to 0. We can't have that. b cannot equal 1, because 1 raised to any power is just 1. So all of your answers would be 1. And b must be greater than 0. Okay, so your b has to be bigger than zero in order to be an exponential function. Okay, um, some examples. Okay, notice it has to be a function where the variable is in the exponent. So this one it would be an exponential function. One third raised to the x. B is bigger than zero, has a variable as an exponent. Um, this one is seven raised to the negative x. Still number bigger than zero. The exponent's still a variable. Even though it's a negative, that's okay. This would be 1 over 7 to the positive x. Okay, that still is okay. Some non-examples, not exponential functions. Remember, to be exponential, the variable must be an exponent. This one's not. This one doesn't have any variables. 5 raised to pi. Pi is just a number. This one has no variables as any exponents. And then this one looks like it should be. However, on a restriction, remember, b cannot equal 1. If b is 1, then every number you plug in, 1 to the first, 1 squared, 1 to the third, 1 to the fourth, all of those are going to equal 1. So that wouldn't, it wouldn't help us. That, that is a, a non-exponential uh, function. Okay, so those are some examples of exponential functions and some non-examples. Um, okay, so next step is we are going to evaluate exponential functions. Okay, so the first one says f of x equals 4 to the x, exponential function. And it says plug in 2 into my function. So really, I'm just doing 4 squared. 16. Can't get much easier than that. 4 squared is 16. All right, now let's look at the next one. 4 to the x, and then the x we're plugging in is 1 third. So 4 to the 1 third, which is really equal to the cubed root of 4. Remember, anytime we raise something to, the, to a fraction, it's a cubed root or a fourth root, whatever the number is on the bottom. So we could use our calculator for this one and get 4 raised to the 1 third. Remember, fractions have to go in parentheses, and we would get an answer of 1.59. 1 oops, 1.59. Okay. Um, and then down here at the bottom, we have another one here. It's f of x equals 4 to the x still, and our new x is negative 3. So 4 to the negative 3. That's equal 1 over 4 to the positive 3 based on exponent rules. And that would be 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. So 1 over 64 would be our exponential function. Okay, so pretty easy to evaluate. That's, that's pretty much Algebra 2 or um, Algebra 1 info. Okay, um, next part of this particular lesson is how to graph exponential functions. Okay, so the first one we're going to graph is a straight 3 to the x. Okay, so we're going to make an xy table, try to get some numbers here. Um, let's do our normal ones that we normally do. Oops, I'm going to start again. I don't like the way that looks. We're going to do okay, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Let's see what we get here. So let's start down at the bottom of 2. 3 squared, that's equal to 9. Let's do 3 to the first, that's equal to 3. 3 to the 0, remember anything raised to 0 is 1. Let's do negative 1, 3 to the negative 1. That's equal to 1 over 3 to the first, or just 1 third. And 3 to the negative 2 is 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. Okay, so we have some numbers. You could do a few more, but here's our table that we're going to use. Okay, so we'll graph it over here. So negative 2, 1 ninth. So 2 to the left, 1 ninth is real low. I don't know if I can do it on here. That's pretty close. Um, negative 1, 1 third. A little bit higher than that one. It's probably a little bit too high, but that's okay. 0, 1, uh, 1, 3, and then 2, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 would probably be right here. And then let's think about 3. Okay, 
3 to the third, that is 3 times 3 times 3, that's 27. So that's way up there. So what the thing about exponentials is they grow rapidly. So if you want to add that to the very first page here, they grow very fast. Okay, exponential functions grow very fast. Okay. And that is right through the X. So we need to finish this off here. Let's graph this. It would be very hard to trace, but we'll just give it a whirl here. Um, and this is an X or a Y. Um, has a horizontal asymptote at zero. Doesn't ever touch. Gets really, really close. Doesn't ever touch. And shoots off um, out of the screen really, really quick. Okay. So this is an, actually an exponential growth. Because, so this would be a growth because when we go from left to right, it's going up. Left to right, it's going up really fast. Okay, let's do another one. This one is one half raised to the x. So we're going to do the same x, y table. We're going to do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And we're going to plug in some numbers here. So let's do, let's start at the bottom again. So one half squared. That's one half times one half. That is one fourth. One times one, two times two. So one fourth. One half to the first is equal to just one half. One half to the zero. Anything raised to zero is just one. One half to the negative one. Okay, let's see what one half to the negative one is. So one half raised to the negative one. I'm assuming it's going to be two. Yep. Okay, so two here. And negative two would be four. So I'll just I'll just tell you the answer to that one. All right, so let's plot this one. So negative two, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, negative one, two, zero, one, uh, one, one half, uh, two, one quarter. Okay, so now you can see that this one's kind of the opposite. So if we do, um, if I went down here to negative three. That's actually going to be 9. So negative 3 is 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 would be up here. So it looks very similar to the last one, except it's in the opposite direction. Okay. Once again, we have a horizontal asymptote here. This one is called a, instead of a growth from left to right, what is this one doing? From left to right, it's going down. So this one's actually called a decay or an exponential decay. Okay, so those are the two types, exponential growth, which goes up, exponential de decay goes down. And on the next page, you have a chart here that tells you all about this exponential growth from left to right goes up, exponential decay goes down, and it has all those different things we've talked about, domain, range, y-intercept, x-intercepts, um, asymptotes, end behavior, all of those things can be found right on this chart. So use that to help you with some of the homework problems. And last but not least, we have some examples of exponential functions in real life. Um, we've talked about these in algebra two, some simple interest, compound interest, continuous, co continuously compounding. These are the different formulas. Okay, so let's, uh, let's label what we know here. So capital A equals amount of money. Um, P stands for original investment. Original investment. And um, what else? R stands for interest rate. And it must be in decimal. It must be in decimal form. Um, what else here? We have T is, is time and years. Some of you probably remember a lot of this. And, the, and N stands for um, number of times compounded. And those are all the different letters. And E, so you see here there's E in the continuously one. That's E, which is the um, number on your calculator. So let me show you where that is on the calculator. So remember E, so second LN, we have E raised to the, okay? Um, so that is what we are doing for that one. All right, so we are going to now do an example. We're, we're going to start this one, then we'll finish up the rest in class. This is example four. 
It says, Joey, the detention morbido, invests $600 in Subway paychecks into an account that gives a 6% interest rate with making no other deposits or withdrawals, what will his account be worth in 20 years? Okay, so when there's no compounding, when it's straight, just wants to know how much is in the account, um, we are going to use simple interest. Okay, so we're gonna use this formula right here. Let me copy this and I will paste it on the next page. We're gonna use our simple interest formula. We'll do the first one here. Okay, so let's fill in everything that we know. We're trying to figure out how much money he has. So A is equal to P, how much did he originally invest? 600, so 600 times one plus, what's R stands for the interest rate, our interest rate is six. Now, if you just do six, that's wrong. It's gotta be a decimal. It's 0 0.06. Remember, less than 10% is 0 0.0 and then the number, okay? Less than 10%, this is six, is 0, 0.0 and then whatever the number is, so 0 0.06. And then we're raising it to T, which is 20 years, okay? So let's uh, do this on the calculator. Remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, we need to do the parentheses first. So one plus 0 0.06. And then I'm gonna raise it to 20, raise that to 20 equals, and then we're gonna multiply that by 600. And in 20 years, with no compounding, just regular interest, he will have $1,924.28. Remember, money can only go to two decimal places, so 28 cents. Okay. Not a huge amount of money after 20 years, but it is more money than you started with. So $1,924.28. And just remember that this means he's not he's not doing any other deposits or withdrawals. This is just investing 600, getting 6% 6 interest for 20 years. He'll have $1,924.28. Okay. So we will start um, next class with these couple of examples to finish this up. And this will show us how to use, not that, this will show us how to use the, the other formulas here. Okay, so that is it. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good night.